Hey guys, it's Tom Cherams with the Fujinet Project, and I wanted to do a quick video after a long day of hacking uh, to show what I've been working on with the HTTP adapter. Now this is an example of showing how to use BASIC to do an HTTP GET, but with a few more features than you would typically get with a typical GET request on the HTTP protocol adapter, namely being able to get and set headers uh, to take and retrieve, you know, retrieve bodies and um, to do more advanced things that kind of sit outside of the scope of using HTTP to just transfer files. Now to do this, we're actually going to take a look at a little test program that I've written here. And we can see what's going on here just a bit. We define a variable. We, set, so we do some pokes to basically turn on the display flag so we don't get an accidental clear screen. And we open up a file on my web server, which is the index.html on my Raspberry Pi web server. Now, because this uh, file, because this web server actually has a username and password in front of it, I need to actually take and send a header for an authorization. Now, normally this is handled with an XIO command, which I have written here to specify a login and a password, but I'm doing it here manually to show how you would take and send custom headers up to a web server before the web service, before the HTTP transaction takes place. We also want to specify that we want the date and content length headers so that we can uh, do something with them, in this case, display them. We then immediately try to take and get the headers. And once we get the headers, we take and we display them, and we turn right around, and we get the body. Now notice that line 30 is rimmed out, and this is the one that actually takes and sends the authorization header to the server. You're going to see the effects of this in just a moment, but this underscores a very important point about how the protocol adapters themselves work. By using XIO commands, we change the behavior of the input and output commands to do different things, such as uh, sending or getting headers back, uh, sending post data, etc. And so with that, if we take and run this as is, we see that we get an authorization required. This is because we're not sending that header. But if we go ahead and remove that comment, it will send that header for us and we'll see the expected result. And so on. I'll end this video by basically showing that the information for the different XIO commands and whatnot for the different protocol adapters and what they can do is actually available on the Fujinet Wiki. And you can see it here in the Fujinet Wiki once we go to it. You see all sorts of user documentation, but you see programming information. And you see all sorts of SIO commands for the end network adapter. And we have all sorts of interesting ones that are common for all of the known devices, but we have some for the different protocols as well. And one of them is set channel mode. And if you see here, all the different modes, you see what the aux2 values are, what they do, and what each, how each of these changes the behavior of the appropriate read or write channel. And in the case of things like headers, the format that's expected. Now, you also have 
the ability to take and send post data. Post, if you use aux1 equals 13, that sets HTTP into post mode, and you can subsequently do an XIO 77 for uh, aux, for aux2 of number 4 for set post data, and you can print the body of your post request. Now once you switch to another mode, such as uh, get headers or body, the HTTP request will take place. I will actually take and show this in a bit more, but I wanted to take and show, uh, go ahead and get this out to show how this worked. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and leave this as it is. So um, until next time, guys, have fun.